If your business is working with recurring revenue, then this HubSpot feature is specifically for you. Now, I have to mention it's enterprise only, so that's sales enterprise, where you can track your recurring revenue, including upgrades and churn. And I'll show you right now how you can actually use this feature. So if we go to HubSpot, you will find this feature under reporting and then analytics tools. And here you will see revenue analytics. Here we can see that I actually have not used this feature before. I specifically left it this way so I can exactly show you how you can set this up in your account if this hasn't been used before. So you can obviously use the guidelines at the top here, but we're just going to start setting this up, clicking on add properties so we can start tracking recurring revenue. Right now the properties are being set up and we are able to use these recurring revenue properties within our deals. So let's quickly check if it's already visible there. So we'll pick this deal right here. And okay, I'm, I'm gonna add another menu right here. But I think, yeah, so the properties are here. So it's this information that we're looking for. But the first thing you want to do in your account is to actually make sure that this is shown in your account by default so if we go to deals record guest customization and then customizing our left sidebar we are going to change this deal view we're going to add a section for recurring revenue um let's not capitalize this since the first one also it doesn't have this and then here we can see we want these or properties in there. Save this and now this will be easily accessible in all of our deals. So let's go back to this deal right here. And let's say, um, so this is PR consulting. Let's say this is actually a PR consulting retainer. And then right here we can see now that we have recurring revenue. So we can say the recurring revenue amount for this one um, let's say that this deal is for one year and the recurring amount is 10,000. Then the re recurring revenue deal type in this case is new business. Um, inactive date and inactive reason. So these are properties that we will use if we know when this will become inactive. So let's say this starts on October 31st. And I know that they will just for one year. So it will become inactive in October next year. And the inactive reason is that they will probably downgrade at that point because they um, need less of our services. So let's actually close this deal right now. Uh, so the close date is still October 31st. We're going to the stage closed one. And now we should actually be able to see this in our analytics. So once we set that up, we will see this deal in our report here. So we can see in October, this is 10K in new recurring revenue. And after that, it will become existing recurring revenue. We can see this report on a monthly basis. And we're also able to see it in a table view underneath here. So now let's have a look at um, if we add another deal, how that will look here. So let's go to deals again. Then we'll, um, we'll close this deal with Pearson Hartman for content creation. Um, this is also a monthly retainer for um, about three months. Um, so let's say that's then 25K a month. This is also new business. And since we're starting again um, in October, this deal will end at the end of January. And then the inactive reason will be at that point that they will churn. Then of course, after we've set those values, we will need to close this deal again. So now we close this deal, we go back to our revenue analytics reports and we can see here that now we have 35K of new revenue in October. Now, let's say there is a change in the meantime. So go back to this uh, Pearson deal. 
And we're going to make a new deal under Pearson Hartman. Call it uh, content creation downgrade. So we're also going to update the previous de uh, deal with the last two properties, but we also need a new deal uh, for the specific downgrade. So this will count as a separate deal. Um, let's say this one is going to close at the end of November. Um, well, let's make it December 1st instead. This is existing business. And our contact again is at RV. We will create this deal. Closing uh, December 1st. Then the recurring amounts at that point will become 15k. This is a downgrade. And for now we will not add an inactive, and, uh, inactive date and reason. But we will go back to the other one. So this one can also close. Um, the close date still needs to be in the future though. So we need it on December 1st. Then when we go back to our previous deal. So that's this one. We can say now that this will actually um, become inactive on November 30th. Uh, because of a downgrade now. So we'll save that as well. And then if we go to the analytics tools, go to the revenue analytics. Here you can now see how this affects our report. So in October, we still have the same amount. So the 35K, 10K for one deal, 25 for the other. Then in November, we will see that we have 35K uh, in existing revenue. But then we have the lost recurring revenue or minus 25K. And then here we will see that we have our existing revenue and then lost recurring revenue because um so this is shown as lost because they downgraded so it's it's still in the positive side here but as you can see the value went down um so that is how this is reflected here so we will see for each month our new recurring revenue we will see our existing recurring revenue and we will see our lost recurring revenue. Let's add in one more deal um, so that we can see how this will uh, influence this report. So let's go to our deals again. Let's uh, close this deal with X Capital. This will be for a recurring amount of 10K. And this is new business. We're Expecting to close this on December 1st. Uh, and then for now we'll leave open the inactive date and inactive reason. We'll save this deal. Um, oh, make sure that it's a closed one. Uh, still on December 1st though. And then we'll go back to our reports. So here we can now see that we also have this new business in here. Now, this is a very interesting report to make important business decisions because you're easily able to see how much, how much churn there is each month and how the recurring revenue is actually evolving over time. So right now in this report, we can see that we're just working with like the last quarter here. But for December, for example, you can really see now Oh, we have new recurring revenue in the month. Oh, we have our existing recurring revenue and how we have our lost recurring revenue because of the downgrade that happened. This way you can see how you can guide your sales teams to guide the recurring revenue in the right direction that you need to make your business grow over time. So I hope this was an interesting video. If you like this video, I'm sure that this tutorial right here is also a really interesting one for you. It's also specifically about HubSpot and another quick training. And I'll see you in the next one.